Fred Becky, a fabled mountaineer and author who was the first to take hundreds of routes to the summits of North America's tallest peaks in Alaska, the Canadian Rockies and the Pacific Northwest in an audacious seven-decade climbing career, died on Monday in Seattle. He was 94. Megan Bond, a close friend of Mr. Becky's, wrote in a Facebook message that he died of congestive heart failure in her home. A longtime resident of Seattle, he had been in hospice care for four days, she said. Rawboned and tenacious, Mr. Becky made as many as a thousand ascents that no one was known to have taken before. He wrote a dozen books on mountaineering, many of them considered definitive guides to the terrain of the continent's best known and least accessible peaks. Mr. Becky was virtually unknown to the general public, the exact opposite of Sir Edmund Hillary, the New Zealander who, with his Sherpa guide, Tenzing Norgay, won worldwide fame by conquering Earth's tallest peak, the 29,029 foot Mount Everest, on the Nepal Tibet border in 1953. Indeed, Mr. Becky shunned publicity and people. He lived like a hermit in Seattle, holding up to write or vanishing for months on expeditions. He looked like a scruffy hobo a wiry, stooped nomad with a backpack, a shapeless jacket, dirty pants and sneakers. But he was all-purpose, the craggy face leathery from sun, wind and snow, powerful hands scarred with cuts, flyaway hair crushed under a woolen cap, keen eyes for the next to hold, and a toothy smile for the book signings. He never married or had children, never had a business, or sought security. Friends said he just wanted to climb mountains. But to the fraternity of climbing enthusiasts around the world, he was a phenomenon whose exploits above clouds and tree lines at 10,000 to 20,000 feet resounded in mountaineering lore and journals, the achievements of an eccentric daredevil who took on the continent's last unclimbed peaks and uncharted routes, who probably took more risks than anyone in history. He wrote guidebooks and lectured for the Conoscenti, Americans and Canadians who appreciated the history, topography and perilous beauty of their wilderness strongholds, and for those who hoped to test their mettle on glacial escarpments with rope, ice axe and aching limbs for the reward of standing on the crown of a mountain called Terror or Despair, overlooking a vast panorama of the world. If Thoreau and Emerson describe the transcendental American theme, then Becky, after Ahab, akin to Kerouac, describes the oddly manic drive to scale and map and detail the wilderness in a modern way. Steve Costi, executive director of the Mountaineers, a Seattle based outdoor recreation group, told the New York Times in 2008, when Mr. Becky was in his 72nd year of mountaineering. He climbed Africa's tallest peak. Mount Kilimanjaro, 19,341 feet, and Switzerland's highest massif, Monte Rosa, 15,203. But he rarely ventured into the Himalayas, straddling the borders of China and India, where a dozen of the world's greatest summits defied human intrusion for centuries, rising more than five miles above sea level into an otherworldly realm of yawning abysses. 100 mile and hour winds, perpetual cold and air so thin that the human brain and lungs cannot function properly in it. While other experienced mountaineers repeated ascents of Himalayan and Andean peaks for speed records, Mr.